Welcome back. I'm with Dr. Pascal. I'm Dr. Dan. Today we're going to be talking about a good morning routine and the effect that could have on your overall health and well-being, but especially about stress and how we start the day. Right. So, as I've mentioned before, we tend to build on our podcast topics, right? Because they really do tie in and we're just building this global idea of health. And so recently we talked about proactive versus reactive health. And so when you start your morning without a morning routine, many of us will end up starting in a reactive state. So what does that mean? You wake up to an alarm that you've maybe snoozed two or three times because right. we didn't get to bed early enough. So you're waking up tired, trying to get that extra bit of sleep, but now you're late. So now you get out of bed and you're rushed. You're rushing through, maybe you skip breakfast, taking a quick shower while doing that. Maybe you're checking social media, right? And you're seeing everybody else's highlight reel of their life and maybe that's making you envious. And so what we're doing is starting off on the wrong foot and we're building the stress hormones, cortisol. We're building that fight or flight response and now you end up being tense. You get into your car, rush to work, traffic, all of those things are just gonna accumulate and build your stress or that fight or flight response in your body. And generally when we get to work, that doesn't go down, that tends to increase throughout the day. And so if you spend your entire day in that sympathetic state, how do you think you feel at the end of the day? Tight, sore, stiff, pain, stress, can't sleep, it just magnifies everything. Absolutely, and then if you do that day after day, week after week, month after month, what happens? Ultimately some form of sickness, right? However that'll present for different people might change. So what we're gonna try and do today is talk to you about the proactive morning routine to try and set you off on the right track for that mental health to get the day started right. And again, just to give it a little bit maybe of context, what we wanna to try to do is help, first of all, obviously our patients uh, you know, heal it and, and get to a higher state of health. And obviously just our listeners out there, just to, so that they get a, a better understanding of, of how all of this could fit in to allow them to be healthier. Correct. Right? Yep. So key thing that we wanna to try to do is start our day a little bit earlier. And like we talked about earlier before we started recording is, is even if someone wakes up, let's say five or 10 minutes earlier, and even if they do nothing else but just be up five or 10 minutes earlier, so now they feel like now they're in control of the start of their day, they're not always rushing or behind the eight. Correct. Right? So as a goal, try to get up 15 minutes earlier but by doing that, we really need to start the night before with a good bedtime routine. And maybe we could talk about that on another podcast because that's a whole topic unto itself in terms of proper sleep and, and a proper routine. But if you can try to go to sleep 15 minutes earlier and get a good night's sleep. So ideally, no phone for the last hour before you go to bed so you can have a nice restful sleep. Absolutely. So ideally, if we could start with 15 minutes and then you could maybe increase that time o over a period of time, but even 15 minutes could, could really start to help things out. Yeah, and so as it goes for the morning routine, again, like Dr. Dan just mentioned, you could do anything you want during that time. So getting up early is a win. But let's talk about, we're gonna give you guys four categories of things that you can work on. We'll talk about little tidbits in each category and then what you can do is maybe choose a couple different things from each category and try and build your own morning routine for, based on what's important to you. That's right. So in our office, we talk to our patients and we do workshops mostly on four key subjects that we all always talk about. Think well, eat well, move well, and heal well. Those four core topics really affect your overall health and well-being. So we can control think, eat, move, heal, so then we can in fact control our overall health. So we're gonna start with giving you a few tips like Dr. Pascal said, and hopefully you could kind of, you know, maybe pick a few of those that we talked about today and, and slowly make a difference in your overall health and well-being. So we wanna start with think well, okay? So the main thing, well, let's talk about the night before. So we talked about quieting the mind, getting your mindset ready for bed, but then when you wake up in the morning, we also wanna keep the mind quiet and in control, right? So what are some of those things that we are doing first thing in the morning, right? Or are we talking about prior to going to bed, you could also do some of these things. That might be creating a list of the top five things that you want to achieve the next day, whether that's before bed or first thing in the morning, right? Gratitude, so doing a gratitude journal before bed or a gratitude journal the first thing that you, when you wake up, right? Mm -hmm. Now, one of the things that I really I think is, is is massively beneficial for people is the first thing people usually do first thing in the morning is they wake up and then go straight to their phone yes 
when you go straight to your phone, you're literally driving yourself into that stressful state. Yeah. So I, like, I, I, I beg you, try to do no phone, whether it's for the first 20 minutes, half an hour, ideally hour before you, you wake up, so, or sorry, after, after you, you wake, wake up. up. Yeah. So you're waking up and you're not led by what your phone is telling you or not telling you. Correct. You're starting your day on your own kind of strength and, and, and routine. So no phone for the first hour. You could use, like Dr. Pascal said, uh, gratitude, but you could also use a great little, uh, there's tons of apps out there now that have like a meditation Guided apps. Like, uh, Headspace is a great app that I've used in the past. It's a quick 10 minutes, it basically walks you through um, you know, a 10 minute meditation, so at least it starts your day out. Correct. Right. Another a good one that you could do is positive affirmations. A lot of people think these are cheesy, but mm -hmm. they do work well, and they, they increase the dopamine response in your brain, you know, fake it till you make it, but just literally, stating positive things about yourself, focusing on your strength, and repeating those to yourself over and over in your head will build a positive mindset and will build your confidence, right? Just saying things, you know, whether it's I am strong, I'm healthy, I'm healing, all those things, right? I am a positive person. And you just repeat those things to yourself over and over, and in the long term, those really do pay off to affect a positive, healthy mindset, yeah. right? One thing that I've that I've seen numerous times in the past yeah. from different, uh, whether it's different speakers, uh, there's a few TED talks on even on the subject, is making your bed. Now it seems very very simple, but one of the key things that they do, uh, you know, basic training in the army is they basically teach them how to make their bed properly and as you know perfect as it possibly can be. And it's not about doing it perfect, but basically what it does is whatever happens through the rest of your day, it could be awful things, terrible things, stressful things, you know that you started your day by doing something right and you did it. So Absolutely. you start your day as a win instead of starting your day kind of behind the eight ball again. Absolutely. So, and also when you come back home after that stressful day, imagine going back to your bed, to your bedroom, and seeing it nice and you know tidy and, and all you know in, you know those 14 pillows that you know your wife wants to have on the bed it's all perfect so at least that's a gr it'll help you uh, instead of coming back to that bedroom and going oh it's just disheveled and sheets are everywhere and and that's just adds to your stress so Absolutely. making your bed could really have a massive impact on your overall well-being I can't stop chuckling, Dr. Dan, because I had heard a podcast about somebody else who said, take that habit even when you go on the road. So yeah. I started taking that habit going to a, a hotel room. I, I feel funny doing it, but I do it just to, to build that same routine. And it's that same mindset of doing it consistently regardless of the circumstance in life. So making your bed, I, I totally agree on that one. Well done. The next topic is eat well. And for me, one of the key things I think we both agree on yep. is the first thing you should do first thing in the morning is drink a big glass of water. Yeah. Hydration is so key for the brain, for the body. We're massively dehydrated. So after obviously sleeping for seven, eight hours, our body needs water first thing in yeah. the morning. So whether you already have it filled on your nightstand or it's on the counter in the kitchen waiting for you for the next morning, it's the easiest thing to do. Just you know, start with a massive glass of water first thing in the morning. Yep. And then also there's other things that you could do too. Like, so we're, let's say we are in a hurry. So we're trying to do things in that sensitive time frame without being rushed. A smoothie is one of the easiest ones that I know we both do. We, mm -hmm. we keep all the ingredients here. We often do them at the office too. But putting together like a green smoothie or a healthy smoothie where you're putting in high quality nutrition, at least you know you're starting your day off by getting, you know, you can get vegetables, good fats by throwing in some frozen avocados berries, you get some antioxidants in there, right? You could throw in chia seeds, you could throw in flax to get some good omega oils. And so, you know, there's all kinds of things you can throw in there. You can even add some supplements, right? Vitamin yeah, C powder. Absolutely. And so then you blend it up and now you just have this high quality nutrition that you can put into your body first thing in the morning or shortly thereafter. And the great thing about a smoothie that I think we both <laughs> basically use is everything is almost frozen, right? Yeah. You could have your frozen greens, like frozen spinach, yeah. frozen avocados, frozen berries, uh, you know, whatever else. Else. so nothing goes bad so you could always have those things stocked in in uh, you know in your home we I also throw in hemp hemp hearts or chia yes. seeds uh, you could use coconut oil uh, coconut non milk no, if coconut you want milk to. Yeah. sorry yes uh, non-sweetened almond almond uh, milk uh, hemp 
almond milk, whatever, that so you can decrease the amount of sugar that you're taking yep. first in the morning with massive nutrition. And good fats. So yeah, I'll throw Great almonds fats. in there too, like or almond yep. butter. Sometimes I'll just throw in even handfuls of nuts in the Vitamix. I'll, uh, I'll blend them up, but that is a great thing to do in the morning too. Yeah. Right. Um, move well. Okay. So sedentary lifestyle, right? We know sitting is the new smoking. Maybe same thing. We could do a podcast on that sometime, but we don't move enough, right? We've talked about before about the importance of movement and the health of the brain, the health of the spine, the health of the overall body. So, you know, we have a short time frame, so we're not necessarily getting up and doing an hour of activity, but we don't need that much time. So Dr. Dan, what are some of the things that we could do quickly in the morning to get the benefits? So depending on time, but ideally you would do something that would get your body moving to the point where you're sweating a little bit. Right? Yes. So whether it's uh, if you have you know you know equipment at home, whether you're on a treadmill or a bike or just literally running in place, doing some burpees or or anything that gets your body moving wakes not only the body up but wakes your mind up as well. So now you're awake. You're not waking up at noon. You know by the time you know you have half your day is done, you're already awake. Stretching and moving your spine is so key as well, especially for some of our patients that we're working through their corrective care with them. We, we need to kind of get their bodies and, and moving straight. Great. I use uh, yoga with Adrian uh, on YouTube. So I, I could, a lot of times like this morning, I did a 15 minute um, workout uh, or, or yoga with, with, with her. Uh, super easy, gets my body moving, stretching. So I know that by the time I get to work, everything's warmed up and ready to go. Awesome. Uh, the other thing that you can do is, you know, if you want to incorporate movement, depending where you live, how far you live, but you could include that in your commute, right? The yep. move well can For be sure. in the morning. It can be just simply walking to work, right? Maybe you live close enough that you can walk. Maybe it's a little bit further and you want to ride your bike. And so there's the opportunity there to move well, obviously, and improve your health in different ways that you're not driving, you know, you're saving on carbon emissions, you're saving on gas, and you're getting exercise all at the same time, right? Yeah. So there's definitely opportunity to be very creative with the move well aspect of that morning routine. Yeah. Or even walking, you know, right now, obviously it's summertime for us right now and, and here in Winnipeg, just walking in nature. There's something about nature, getting looking outside. at getting yeah. outside, so good for the body. We're looking at those things and being amazed at whether it's the sunrise, the flowers, the trees, the smells, just that all that just allows our body to, again, helps us wake up and in a good state of mind. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, realistically, it, this is probably the best time of year to, to build this habit and start. Why? Because the sun is up at 5 a.m. So yeah. no matter almost how early you're getting up, unless you're getting up at 4 a.m., you're gonna be up and you're gonna see the sunshine. And that alone, getting that natural sunlight on your eyeballs, right, when the sun hits your eyes, we, we know that that's a great way to actually energize yourself and wake yourself up, right? So this time of year, yeah, you get outside, birds are chirping a little bit already, slightly warmer mornings, love this time Perfect. of year. Yeah. And the last one is we, we talk about is heal well. So here, what, a few things that we could talk about is, is you know, if you are uh, taking supplements or you're you know, taking fish oils that we recommend or vitamin C or anything else, a lot of times, you know, because the day is so busy, you know, by the time the day's over, we sometimes forget to do those. So as a morning routine, incorporating that in terms of, okay, so I have my, let's say my big glass of water, take the supplements that help me heal and function properly. It's a great way to do that as well. Yep. And the other key thing for, especially for our patients, when we, we give them stretches and exercises at home for spinal correction, a great time to do that is first thing in the morning. Yep. Because now if you do it first thing in the morning and you have a busy day, you know that it's already been done. You Absolutely. don't have to now try to fit it in you know between soccer practice and you know making dinner and everything else if you do it right up right off the bat it's done you don't have to worry about it it's, it's done awesome right and the last one the bathroom habits training good healthy bowels right when you're under stress one you you get less blood flow to your bowels less bowel movement in general your digestion is not going to be the same so it's a good time while you have that mindset control you're not in that sympathetic state is to get your bowels going go to the bathroom clear out because that is just obviously good detoxification but it's just good to get that done first thing in the morning and have a consistent schedule with that as well because yes you should be passing bowel movements every single day if not multiple times a day to keep things consistent and a, a lot of times it doesn't mean you don't even have to go but it's about training, training. your bowels so literally get in there and sit, sit down, down yeah. and sit down for five or ten minutes and you could multitask if you need to but at least you're starting to train your body to function a certain way. Well, Dr. Dan, why don't you, we'll wrap up here shortly, why don't you just take us through your morning routine? 
So for me is wake up like like I talked t- talked about water and my supplements first thing in the morning, and then I move right away. So for me, I, I enjoy that because it wakes me up. So I go downstairs. Uh, I have a few pieces of equipment uh, running in place, uh, some burst burst training. Uh, I have uh, kettlebells and uh, skipping ropes and I do that to move my body or I I at least do a little bit of stretching as well to get things moving. After that, I usually do at least five or ten minutes of of kind of planning the day in terms of the main topics or things that I need to get done. So I look at especially the schedule and then go through a little bit of gratitude. For me, that's a big part that I started, you know, maybe probably close to 10 years ago now is just going through and just finding those little things that to me have made a massive difference and it could be as simple as you know like uh, my dog got a haircut and he looks so cute like you know and focusing on those little things that then start my day on 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 the right um, right note and ideally doing a little bit of learning so whether it's it's reading for for 10 minutes um, just something that would help my mind and where I want my mind to go as opposed to being kind of like again behind the eight ball so my morning routine would typically last about 45 minutes or so um, I not in a perfect day even if if it's uh, if it's a kind of rough busy time of year ideally even for me 20 minutes is five minutes of moving five minutes of, of you know a journaling gratitude five minutes of learning and I know that at least that will help my day start off in the right foot Absolutely. So are, are very, very similar. Very similar. I start up first thing I do straight to the kitchen. One to two big glasses of water and my supplements almost always right away. Then for me, I generally sit down and sometimes I'll alternate between learning. So sometimes it'll be a book and I'll sit down because obviously time can be limited. In a perfect world, I would do both. But I'll alternate between doing meditation mindset. So twenty minutes of meditation mindset or twenty minutes of learning. So I kind of alternate between those two, just in a fairly quiet, dim light space, so I'm staying very calm. And then when I do my meditation, a lot of it is, for me, my meditation starts with my five top priorities, like my key priorities for life. And so I start by just reminding myself what my five top priorities are. That, that way that's during the day, like, yep. I, you know, if something goes wrong, I kind of realize that maybe that's just a really simple first world problem. I let it go because there are these five big things that I'm trying to achieve, you know, whether it's family, professionalism. You just pick those things that are important to you and I kind of repeat them over and over so they become ingrained as my, as my focus. And then I go through affirmations and then quiet my time and or 20 minutes of reading and something that I want to challenge my brain and continue to grow and learn. Then it generally goes into 30 minutes of exercise. I bike to work now, so get on my bicycle, bike to work, and so I get that exercise first thing in the morning. So that's usually how it goes for me, is water, my supplementation, nutrition, sometimes some food prep in there, um, 20 minutes of mindset learning, and then 20 to 30 minutes of exercise, depending. Uh, and just to be brutally honest with all of our listeners, is it perfect like that every single day for you, Dr. Absolutely Dr. not. <laughs> Absolutely not. You know, the kids get in the way. There can be bad nights of sleep. And yes. so, you know, the win for me is when I get back on track because, of course, I've slipped. And sometimes it's just, you know, if, if I get up early and it's five minutes, I'm going to read for five minutes just to say that yes. I did it, right, to get back on track or um, maybe I skip the, mi- the mindset and I don't have time for that stuff and all it is is the exercise, but it's, you know, by no means is it perfect. It's a constant, constant effort yeah. and I think that just goes with everything in life in general and the success is in the grid of doing it over and over and trying to get a little bit better every day. With, not perfect. Uh, without a doubt. Couldn't have said it better myself because same thing for me. Definitely is not a perfect scenario. I have the ideal of what a typical day should look like. Yeah. Sometimes it doesn't happen, but again, it's just that repetition, that continuation for of sure. what I want it to look like. And, and one step at a time, we'll get there. Absolutely. And so just to wrap it all up, so we're talking about the importance of morning routines, being proactive versus reactive. So the goal is to get up a few minutes earlier, right? And then in a perfect world, you're gonna plan that stuff out the day before. So we talked about four categories and we gave you guys a couple different items that you could practice or you could use in your morning routine, right? We talked about thinking well, right? And we talked about whether it was making the bed, gratitude journal, uh, mindset, affirmations, learning, not using your phone. We talked about eating well, so whether that's meal prep, making a smoothie, water, 
Uh, we talked about moving well, so doing some exercise. And if you don't have the energy to get out there and exercise vigorously, simply walking or stretching can be beneficial. Heal well, doing, uh, taking your supplements to help your body heal, doing, like we said for our patients, what's called your dinner roll or corrective exercises, and then training bowels and bathroom habits, right? So all those things, pick a few things, put them into your routine, what you would like, Good luck with it, stay consistent, don't beat yourself up if it doesn't go perfectly, and then we'll see you next time on The Healthy Commute.